Great Giza Pyramid, how does it work? Well, you basically you have a pyramid which is sticking out there out of the sand. Uh, of course, at the time it may not have been sand. And you're getting static electricity discharge. To keep that static electricity discharge from actually coming down to ground, they do a couple of things. Number one, you stick it in a mode of water. That's not going to do too much to it itself because electricity will still work around that. But at the, also at the 35th level there, you got to you, you step the steps so that they're larger down here and smaller there. That's going to help quarantine the static electricity out there. Now from there, they bring it down the one conduit that comes down to the king's chamber that doesn't pierce the skin. That way it's a pure hydrogen conduit. That brings it down into the king's chamber. You're going to get that hydrogen into the king's chamber. You're going to mix it with the oxygen. You're going to bring hydrogen and oxygen up from the bottom section. We're going to get to that really quickly. But bring that hydrogen and oxygen up there. Mix it together to make water. I should have had a blue pen. Don't. Okay, we're going to imagine this one's a blue pen. It's going to go down the grand gallery, down the center of the grand gallery. Any, any evaporation is going to form on the sides of the grand gallery and suck it down into that stream of water, which is going to then pool down into that big hallway that goes over to the Queen's Chamber over there. That, that big hallway is going to pool there. It's deeper on this side. Did you ever notice that? It's deeper on that side, so there's more water over here. There's actually another thing in there that they since filled in that was right in front of the niche. That niche is going to kind of act like an antenna to pull the static electricity up into the room. A couple of other factors in there. But that's where the two conduits that come off the King, Queen's Chamber come in. To, uh, come into play. They never actually came into the room. They didn't. They had to drill through five inches of rock to find them. The only reason they knew it was there is because there was a crack in the wall from the, all that static electricity penetrating through the rock to that conduit over years. Now, the extra water is actually in this system. It's going to spill down into the grotto and come down to the bottom section, which we'll get into really quick here. And this, it's actually kind of like an antenna. It's got your some more resistance uh, I should say more, you didn't talk about the first one yet. Static electricity that's here can't get down to the bottom because it's got some resistance factor there. Plus, there's a whole bubble here of oxygen. Where did oxygen come from? Well, there's a little bit of electrolysis. Oxygen comes out of here. Hydrogen comes out of the grotto itself. The hydrogen is what comes up at the top of there. And then the oxygen, some of it comes up from here. But it, as the system goes, this is the one that actually did pierce the skin. And the way it's shaped there with the funny little uh, hook um, cone shape, that's going to allow oxygen into that system to mix with the water, mix with the hydrogen to create the water that flows down and then spills into the grotto, down into here, into the grotto where there's two granite rocks. Those two granite rocks initiate the electrolysis, and eventually the granite rock in there and the granite rock in there play to do the bigger electrolysis. And you can see how this does the little hook thing down there. You can see this in the system down under I refer to here. In magic with magnetism, we focus on this room. Pyramid system, we focus on here. Upper system, we talk about there. Lower system, we talk about there. Pressure to tap, we talk about how it actually all comes together to finally work. Have a nice day. If you have any, well, have a nice day.